right, just to give you a very quick rundown of what comes in this engine haul kit, I will post the description or post the link in the description. This is the high compression honeable bushing um, major overhaul kit, lights dying. And uh, on that, you will get, these are all the crankshaft bearings. These are seals for each liner. The liner and piston are already come assembled. You have brand new connecting rod bolts. You have the uh, bushings for the, the balancing shaft. Bushings for the, the connecting rods. You have connecting rod bearings. And then obviously there's you know four liners, four pistons, all the associated rings. And then this box here has all of the uh, gaskets for the whole engine, head gasket, oil pan, um, pretty much anything that you need. One thing I also just want to note inside the box for the piston liners is this paper. It tells you a break-in process, some notes. One thing that I noticed here, it says, do not allow the engine to idle for more than five minutes or operate for extended periods of time with little or no load during the first 100 hours after the overhaul. Um, so that's, that's one thing that I'm a little curious about because typically when you have a, uh, a diesel you uh, turn it on let it warm up um, so this is saying basically when you turn it on don't let it idle for more than five minutes and don't just be uh, using it without load in front of the blade so um, I think I have the perfect place to, to do this break in at um, but it'll just be a matter of actually getting it there first so all right so Going to the old main journal bearings right here. Uh, honestly, shows really good wear. I mean, there's no copper color distortion. Um, the only concern I had is there's a little tiny lip, which I doubt you guys can see, but right here, there's a little tiny lip. Um, so what are brand new ones? We're just gonna get those wiped off. I think they have that anti-rust coating or some type of preven preventative treatment on them. Um, wipe them up and then we're going to uh, put a little assembly lube um, if you ever use this stuff but it's good for uh, putting engines together and especially good for like parts that are going to sit for a little bit before they actually get used so we know with the temperature that it is outside you guys can probably see my breath um, it's probably going to take me a little bit to get this back together and then get to the point where I can run it and do the break-in process. So I'm just going to lube this up. This is just the back side of the bearing. I don't know if that matters too much, but here's the journal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do these one at a time. So one, I don't mess up where they go, but two, um... It'll just, I don't know, just make it easier for us. So there's one installed and then take the assembly lube and obviously get that all over this surface. And then I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna crawl underneath there. It might be a little difficult and the camera might be the opposite of what it would look like if you were laying under there like I am, um, just so there's, Obviously space for me to maneuver under there, but for you guys to still see. So hopefully it doesn't make you sick looking at it upside down, but there's that, that's prepped. There's one journal. We got to repeat the same process over again for um, all the journals, but now we're gonna crawl underneath the machine, pull out the bearing on the top side of the crank. Um, machinist told me a little trick, start it with a pick or a flathead screwdriver. Obviously, be very gentle. You don't scratch any of the important surfaces. But then what you can do is you can take like a thin piece of wire, almost like a, a bread tie, and put that through the oil hole and then hand turn the crank over and that'll actually bring the bearing around if we can't get it out um, just by starting it with the screwdriver. So we'll see what we can do and go from there. All right, I don't know if you guys can see anything, but you're like above my head staring at the bottom of the engine. So 
right now it does look crusty rusty dirty down here from when I cleaned out the coolant passages um, but I did coat all the important surfaces with uh, like a rust preventative so it's looking like all of them are still doing well but we'll get that cleaned up here soon so we're gonna try to see if we can start this let's see if I can bring you guys a little closer Okay, so we got it started. You can see over here, it's protruding out. Now I gotta somehow get it out of there. This is where he was telling me that if you stick a piece of thin wire through one of the oil holes, it'll pull it right around for you. But I'm thinking we find something that's rigid but flimsy, like a piece of plastic and just kind of push it around. So let's see what we come up with. Alright, if I can get this thing situated here. Alright, so, I found a large zip tie, cut it square, and I'm just chasing it along the side, and it's slowly pushing the bearing out and around to us. Here is the bearing. And then we just got to get it off there. Voila! And when we look at this, there's no discoloration. That is literally just the dirty coolant stuff that came out of there. Very, very little wear on these bearings. These bearings look really good. So obviously the quality of the oil is still pretty good. Um, and fortunately we took care of that coolant leak very quickly, probably as fast as you possibly could have knowing that we only let the thing idle. And uh, so now we'll get a, a new bearing. We'll get it all lubed up. We'll fish it back up through there and we'll put our journal on there and then we'll torque it to spec and then we'll move to our next cap all right so we got our brand new bearing we got her all greased up with uh assembly lube so we're gonna see if we can't get this fish back up in here now going back in might be a little bit more challenging considering it is all oily now But, believe it or not, that went in pretty nicely. I have to uh, maybe adjust the bearing a little bit left and right to get it lined up. Oh, perfect. All right. Now, if I put the journal on there, <clears throat> Ethan, this is where you hand me that journal. Journal. With the two bolts and the other yeah, bearing. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know if you had it down there or not. <laughs> no. I wasn't that prepared. Here's the problem. Oh yeah, it can only go on one way for those to match up. Alright, so, put the journal on. I've already lubricated the bearing. And we know which way it goes based off of the, uh, based off the groove in the bearing over here. on here
Now, we'll have to get a torque wrench, torque those down, and then we'll jump to the next journal. Oh, I'm just adjusting. Oh, right up to 85. Yeah. Oh, man. I almost just took that right to the teeth. All right, so that lay is just, I love it. Don't you just love it? If it just stayed on the full time instead of flashing, it'd last longer. But regardless, this one was being stubborn, so we took a zip tie, we put it inside the oil galley, and now if you just slowly turn the engine, the zip tie just pushes the bearing right out. And all the stuff from the crankshaft drops on your face. And then you can pull the zip tie out. And the bearing drops right off. Look at that. Now, it's a good thing we're changing the bearings because look at that. These ones actually have a little bit of, once the light stops flashing, these ones actually show a little bit of signs of wear. And that could have been from the coolant getting in there and eating the, the finish off of them. Because the crank sh finish looks fine. So, that's off there, we'll get the other new bearing, we'll get a new battery too apparently. Please wait Why my assistant finds us another battery. Thanks for the brief hold. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can get some of this honey-like substance out onto the old bearing mm, yeah I like it I like it a lot and this one we're gonna want to juice up on both sides since we're fishing it up around the crank Dude, that's an owl. Yeah. That's crazy. That thing sounds like it's right outside the building. Probably is. Or it's down in the valley. That's pretty neat. Moving away. That is pretty neat oh. Use this to gently get it to where she needs to be. Yes. 
she is. Cool. Here's our brand new bearing on our journal. Yep. Dude, I wonder what kind of owl it is. Maybe it's a snow owl. I wonder. Have you ever seen how big they are? Great horned owls? Just like regular regular owls. Yeah, they're pretty sweet. They're sweet. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to see it now, though. You have to have a spotlight. It sounds real close though. Yeah, like to your to your right it sounds like. Probably perched in those trees. In between you and your neighbor? Yeah. Or even just to the right of this building. All right. Now. Dial that thing back down to like 45 for now. Get these torqued up and be on to the next one. I'm probably not going to film all of them because it's just the same process repeated over like five times. Um, so you guys got the gist of it now. But we're going to go through. Slide each bearing out. Slide new one in. Grease everything up. Or lube everything up. Torque every bolt back down. And then once we do that, we'll be on to uh, installing the engine sleeves. Um, and for the engine sleeves, I'll show you. Um, me and my buddy, we made a little homemade tool. Really ain't much to it. Um, but it'll allow us to, to press the sleeves in more evenly than just beating them in with a hammer. So we'll take this torque wrench and the socket, wherever that might be. There she be. This chunk of junk on there is just waiting to go in my eyeballs. So much room under here. The extension being, you know, nine inches long probably doesn't help. Well, you said anything over <laughs> That's what she said too. All right. Take this back up. 95. 85. Now that number we're going to double check in the book. I don't have the book here at the moment, but we'll double check that. And if it's got to go tighter, we'll make them tighter. If it's got to go looser, then I'm, unfortunately, I would probably have to buy some new hardware because I guess I would technically have over torqued them. But judging by the size of the cap bolts, I'm going to say 85 foot-pounds is probably pretty accurate. I honestly was expecting them to be higher. So we'll just we'll double-check the uh, owner's manual and uh, go from there. Take apart the old one. Push the pin out. If it'll come out, this one's gonna be stubborn.
I have no idea why this is being so stubborn. This old one back together so I don't have all these extra ring clips laying around getting accidentally used in exchange for the new ones. All right, so now we got this off. Um, I did torque these, I think, originally because I was trying to get measurements on stuff, so I'll have to get a Two foot pounds is a lot easier with a longer, longer wrench. So this is going to be piston number two, but this is how you would do any of them. Um, if you're reusing your connecting rods like I am, um, just basically take it apart. You got your two halves. And uh, get yourself a new bearing set. Um, I got this whole kit from Ag Kits. Um, not a promotion, it's just where I bought it. And you choose your rod bearing size. Um, one delay in purchasing these parts was because I wanted to take the engine far enough apart where I could take the measurements to get the right size bearings. Um, my connecting rods are 10 thousandths undersized. The um, main journal bearings were actually standard size, so uh, they've obviously done a little bit of work just on the surfaces where these connecting rods mated, but haven't done much work to the crankshaft. Just like to use a little very clean, wipe everything down, kind of clean up the surfaces. Um, now, if you look at the surfaces of these, you can see somebody, when they took this part last, or getting the pistons up out of the cylinders or something, they beat on it instead of using something like a rubber mallet, like the back side of a handle or something. They beat on it with something metal, kind of left a few indents, which isn't ideal, but none of the bearings that I took out of here look like they were spun, so I don't think it's the end of the world. And... The outside dimension or the inner diameter or bore of these connecting rods when they're clamped is within spec according to the service. All right, so once you get the, the new bearings out, you're going to want to lube them up. I'm just using assembly lube for engines. Um, it's a whopping 29 degrees in here, so the assembly lube comes out like molasses. Um, but usually it comes out a little bit nicer when it's, you know, on your average temperature of a garage. Once we get this all greased up, we'll put this inside the connecting rod. Same for the other side.
Now this process is the same thing over four times, um, so I'm not going to show it four times, but um, basically just walk you through the process of it once and you'll get the gist of it. But I just like to lube up both sides of the bearings, whether you're supposed to or not, it shouldn't hurt it. Um, especially since right now I'm doing this rebuild and it's right before a big snowstorm, so the chances of me actually getting to fire this machine up right away are probably slim because the break-in procedure calls for you to actually push material as part in the part of the break-in uh, procedure. So unless I anticipate pushing a lot of snow, this engine might sit at idle for a while, um, like not being run, and I don't want the uh, the lube to naturally start dripping away from these surfaces and then when you go to turn it on it spins the bearing because it just grabs hold of it instead of being lubricated so at this point we got that prepped we want to get two new cap bolts or cap screws yeah so now you got your new bolts just get those prepped kind of kind of staged um, we need to get a new piston, so we'll get that. Here's a whole sleeve kit. Um, they pre-packaged the uh, piston inside the sleeves with the rings already on it, which is kind of a nice feature. This way you don't have to worry about doing that yourself. But inside the box, they all come individually wrapped. And you know, there's your piston, tells you which direction's front. And basically all we have to do is slide the piston up towards the, I guess the bottom of the sleeve you would say. And uh, pull off one of the ring clips, put the connecting rod on, put it back together. But what I've been trying to do before I do that is to just simply put a little WD-40 on the cylinder wall so when I'm moving that, the, the rings aren't just going metal to metal there. So you just, you don't have to go crazy, just a little WD-40 on a rag, wipe down the inside of this, something to kind of help it out. And then you can just gently push on this side You want to just push up just high enough that you can get that uh, ring. So we'll take our snap ring pliers. Pull the snap ring out. Set that down so we don't lose it. This pin slides out. It shouldn't come out of there very hard, um, but it also shouldn't be loose. Now, these connecting rods are labeled front, and also the pistons are labeled front. So we just want to double check. Right now, front is facing that way, and we need this, I believe, to be like this. But what we'll do is we'll double check on the other one. And front is facing that way. And, yep. I guess after you do these once or twice, you kind of remember which way they go. Now this connecting rod might have been for me setting it down. Got some crap on the surface of it here. I'm just gonna wipe this up. Now, um, this kit does come with uh, honable pin bushings. Um, they're silver plate on the back and then they're like a brass on the inside. Um, they are of good quality, but the my machinist told me is like, if you don't feel slop, there's no point in pressing out the old ones and putting in brand new ones. Um, it just essentially be kind of a waste of money. So I checked all mine. 
There was only one that I was a little uncertain of, but all the other, the other three are nice and tight. I don't feel any slop at all. Um, and the one that I was maybe concerned with, I don't know, it might just be a mental thing. I might just be telling myself there's slop there. Um, just being, you know, over worried about it because the last thing I want to do is put this all back together and then have something silly like the slop in that cause a uh, catastrophic issue. So anyway, one last thing I like to do before sliding the piston back in is just taking the, uh, the rag that I put the WD-40 all over and hitting the inside of this sonar wall again. Um, just cause initially we didn't get it all when the piston was in there. And then we can just gently slide this back in there without getting your coat caught in it. And then also if you, if you put it down on a surface and push down like I am, just remember that if you seal off the end, it creates compression. Therefore, it makes it difficult to push it down. Ask me how I know. So, now one final thing we have to do um, to prep said engine sleeve is each kit comes with three seals. Now, depending on the model of your engine, mine is a, my dozer is a 1974 John Deere 450B. However, they had three different iterations of the engine. They had an early iteration where all the seals were inside the sleeve. They had a mid iteration where one seal's on the sleeve and two seals are in the engine. And then they had a late model, which did the same thing with the seals, but it changes the, the wrist pin size and your connecting rods. So. I also found that out the hard way by ordering the wrong kit. That's why it's important to do all your measurements before you order anything. So basically what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna lube up the edges of this sleeve. So when we put our gasket on there, it just slides on without tearing. Um, don't, don't hesitate to use a liberal amount. It's better than tearing your gasket and having to wait a few days for a $5 part to come in to finish building the engine. As you can tell, this stuff's pretty slimy especially with the temperature in here it's not it's really not helping it flow at least not helping me any but then i just try to get at least some of it down here on the lip where it's going to eventually seat now i also lubricate the gasket itself and you just got to be careful that when you install this gasket it doesn't roll or twist um, because I think it is two different sizes. It's like a rectangular gasket or O-ring, if you will. Um, it's not a perfect square or obviously circle. And I'm talking about the cross-sectional area of it. I'm not talking about like the actual geometric shape. But anyway. And of course, now that everything's all lubed up, it just likes to go wherever it wants to instead of staying where you want it to be. So I'll just check it. Looks like I got it twisted a little bit there. So you wanna just make sure that before we get it down to where it needs to be, we get that twist out of there. Which looks like we've accomplished. And then we can 
can slide it all the way down to where it needs to be. And that's prepped. Now, we just basically need to lubricate these O-rings, which at this point, I still have so much of this stuff all over my hands. <laughs> I don't think I even need any more. The black O-ring on my model goes on the bottom, the bottommost groove of the engine. The red one goes on the upper groove of the engine, red, orange, whatever color you prefer. Um, just so you don't mess this up, there is a little piece of paper. It comes with every kit that helps remind you where it's gotta go and what to do. So we're gonna bounce over. We're gonna put these in the machine and we're gonna press fit this sleeve in and uh, hop below the machine, put the cap on, torque the bolts, and we'll be on to our last sleeve. All right, so we've got two of our O-rings here. The black one goes on the bottom, the red one goes on the top. I'm just gonna set this there for a second. I feed this down in here. Just basically, you can feel the groove pretty easily with your fingers once you get down in there. Um, I did go through and clean up all the grooves really well with uh, brake cleaner, then I hit them all with Scotch-Brite. Um, I put engine, engine assembly lube on these seals. Um, they say not to soak the seals in oil because they will swell and they'll make it very difficult to get the um, sleeves in without damaging them. So just kind of fighting this red one to stay where it needs to stay, but it's so slippery. All right, that one's in there. Let me grab the sleeve. All right, here's the sleeve. And we got our other seal here. Gonna gently lower this in and uh, we do have our piston in here already connecting rods so we just got to make sure that that all lines up down there before we go applying too much pressure but I think we're where we need to be so We devise this contraption here as a little press. It should allow us to slowly and evenly put the uh, sleeve back in there. As long as we get things out of the way. And then get a little level here. Tell us how poor we're doing. Looks like this side's got to go down some. Alright, that's pretty good. I'm going to push this piston in some. And then what we have is right here. Oh. Hmm? We have a threaded rod. We welded a nut onto the top of it. And then here's the plate that I used to pull. I just notched out grooves on both sides. We're going to lay this in here. Simply just thread our rod back in there. Now once we use this tool once, it's probably gonna 
round off the end of the threaded rod. Uh, so in order to ever get this tool apart again, we'd have to cut off a few threads, make them clean. But until then, we don't care. All right. So I'm just just gonna slowly. up a little bit and then see if this will work. And that required little to no effort at all. Now to ensure that the uh, seals don't swell and cause the um, the sleeve to come back up out of there. We're just gonna basically take fender washers and we're gonna screw down into the um, opposite corners. And then this will keep pressure down on those sleeves while we assemble the other ones. Voila, it's installed. Now we're underneath it and our connecting rod's already in there. So we're gonna get it halfway aligned and then you're gonna push down on the piston if you can. Mm -hmm. Tap it gently now. You might even have to use like the back side of like a rubber mallet. You can go a little harder. That's on there. We can see this is where the indent is on the bearings. So we're gonna match those up. Probably didn't need to change these, but it's good practice. Um, swap them out, especially since we paid for them. Might as well use them. But. Sometimes the reason you gotta change out bolts is because you have to torque them to yield or torque them essentially past their specs so they elongate and it's kind of like a one-time use. Um, but I don't think that's the case here. I mean, we're torquing these to 52 foot-pounds, which I mean, for the hardened steel bolts that they are, that's probably nothing crazy, but. Slightly shorter torque wrench would be awesome, but I don't think I got one of them. Okay. There we are. We're at 52 pounds. We officially have cylinder number three, sleeve, piston, rings, new bearings, caps, brand new cap bolts, all that put back together. So you just need to repeat the process for cylinders one, two, and four. And then uh, we can work on putting the, the oil pan back on and uh, getting the brand new uh, or the newly machined uh, head on, new injectors, and uh, keep chipping away at this.
and then all four sleeves are done. So at this point now, we have the bolts on here. These are holding the sleeves in place. Um, once we are good and ready to put the head gasket on and put the head on, we will then remove these bolts. But at this point, um, we're probably gonna be done for the night. Um, one thing we wanna just double check, all these say front on them. This one I still have to crawl underneath and hook up, so we'll do that quick. And then, uh, like I said, we'll probably be done for now. I don't even know what time it is, but uh, we'll reconvene at hopefully a warmer date. 10.08. 10 o'clock! Yeah. Did press down on these a little tighter using the homemade tool we have over there, as well as a chunk of aluminum and a hammer to get a couple stubborn areas, but everything looks good now. We checked it with our uh, our gauge, our feeler gauge. So uh, this is four thousandths of an inch, it's very thin. Um, and we checked it and they are in line now. So the uh, service manual says that it cannot be any taller than four thousandths of an inch between one thousandths and four thousandths. So that's looking good now. Whoa. Somebody's calling me. Eh, we're too busy. This lines up really nicely. It does. Did it line up better than the last one? I think so. All right, let's slam around there. This thing's heavy. Is it? Do you need a hand with it? Actually, are you gonna hand it over to me on this side, or do you have to get those lines? We have to like fish it in and over. Okay. Let me let me get a good stance up here. We're playing basketball. Don't lose her. There's also these little tiny caps on here. So don't touch them. So we gotta make sure we don't lose those down in the engine. Yeah, that'd be fun. You and I have different definitions of fun. <laughs> <laughs> you got it facing the right way? I'm sure you do. Yep. I don't know how we wanna do this. Can I take half? <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can bring your end down. You gotta come my way on your half. Oh. That's beautiful. Um. I felt like it went down. I was yeah. like it went down. I think she's in there now. All right, so here's the torque sequence. Um, it looks like this side is two. So this is 
This is number one. This would be number two. one over that side. Yeah, this guy right here. Right? Yeah. One straight across from it. Nope. Nope. Yeah, right? One, two, three. Oh, yeah, that one. Never mind. Yep. And four, five. Yep. Six, six is across from that one. Four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. All right. All right. Fingers crossed. She's good. I guess it's time to put the coolant back in it once we hook up the uh, the water inlet tube over there, and we'll see if she leaks. All right. Here's the moment of truth. Your boy uh, filled this up quite a bit. Mm. All right, so we just poured the coolant in and so far we're not seeing any signs of it leaking. Um, we're gonna let it sit like this for a little bit and then we will uh, start bolting some other stuff onto it. Um, but fingers crossed it's good to go and that'll be the last time we have to mess with it. Say that don't look right. <laughs> I can say you ain't sleeping. <laughs> yeah. You got a hold of that for a second? Yeah. Alright, now I'm in a good position. Alright, so now her? if I hold it there, yep. try to get the gaskets in. Just, just we're gonna go with the front one or the back one, Ethan. I guess we'll go with the back one. In the short bolt. Shortest. Yep. Can't say midget bolt. <laughs> 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 It's not, it's not the proper. I know. Oh, oh my God. God. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. Oh. <laughs> it's not. I know. Nice to mole you. I mean, meet you. Don't say mole. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, we got resident clean freak on the job. <laughs> Don't get your hands dirty now, pal. Yeah. Oh my. Oh, oh, it's fresh.
fresh. This is gonna shine up nice. There's like a quarter inch of dirt on there. I believe it. It's the face of a determined band right there. Like butter. Boom. <laughs> we need something a little thinner. Thinner? Yeah. All right. We're going to get him some more utensils and we'll be right back. Our boy did a bang up job. Look at this, clean our down pipe, or vent pipe, whatever we got here. Valve cover, looking brandy new. Good enough for the old 74. Atta boy. <laughs> new injector.
All right, oil pan's back in. You got the gasket on some sealer. All the bolts are torqued to 35 foot-pounds according to the service manual. Um, put this back down where it belongs. We're just gonna double check to make sure that's tight. And uh, we're on to putting in, putting in the oil. Yeah. <laughs>